And we are live. Welcome, everybody, to the Monday Mastermind. We are so glad that you made it. Um, I'm so glad that I made it because I nearly, nearly never made it a bit later. Uh, today, we've got a really, really good uh, hangout for you guys. This is one of the ones that a lot of people keep asking for, and that is a Q&A session where you get to ask us questions. But before we actually get into that, what I want to do what I want to do is, first of all, mute my sound here so I don't hear myself speak twice in the background here. And uh, I just want to go through the panel and find out how everybody's week has been. I'm going to start off with Pops, as I can see him, the closest from everybody else. Pops, how are you doing? Excellent, Dave. Thank you. Excellent. Uh, we had a great week. Uh, we left here on Saturday after our Saturday hangout, and we went into the boonies and found a great spot out in the middle of nowhere that had some cement pads that are level and you can park on. There's probably about 50 of them or something. We have no idea what was there previously. It was a great place, nice and quiet. There was a few other people there, but they were all quiet. We were spread out. And uh, boy, it was exciting to get away from Las Vegas. We were there for over a month, and it was getting to be a drag. There's a siren going on all the time, which is now we're back in Prump. Nevada, which is same thing here, kind of, but uh, it's quiet. We had a great week. We actually we got a few things done while we were out there. It was quiet. We had no connection, so that was helpful because we didn't have to uh, get online and and communicate with a lot of people, which does hold hold you back a little bit from getting other things done. So it was good, excellent. So nothing like being. In the in the great outdoors, I, I saw some of those pictures. They're absolutely amazing. Um, so yeah, we were I, coming back today, Dave, and I got to say this: we had a horrendous dust storm. Their wind was blowing at uh, what was I think it was uh, 26 miles an hour, gusting to 56, and we had such a dust storm that you couldn't see the mountains where we're surrounded by them. Couldn't see the mountains, and then later on. With the wind still blowing, we had some rain that came with it, and then after that, cleared out, and the wind died down. We noticed that there's snow up in the mountains. It's just beautiful. Uh, had to share awesome. that. No, that's amazing. I will say that if you if you guys ever do come over to visit South Africa and you go and camping in the Berg, the one thing I will guarantee you is that there is so much green. The first thing you're going to say if you ever get a chance to visit here is how green South Africa is. Everybody says the same thing. It's just you have a completely different experience with regards to um, what I see online. Everything is so dusty. Is that correct? Like you, you don't see a lot of green or is that or am I way off there? I suppose it depends where you are. Yeah, out in the mountains around here, or out in the desert, it's dusty, and when the wind picks up, it's it blows around everywhere. And there's um, there's there's some greenery, um, but mostly everything is kind of, it's dry and um, and kind of in a in a um, oh, what's the word dormant state until the rains come in the spring and then they'll green up and more animals will be out and about and then it'll dry out again after time and uh and then they'll go dormant again but there are some plants that uh that stay green year round and some of the cactus right now are getting the smaller cactus are getting color on them so they're starting to rejuvenate and then they will um they will start to grow flowers and stuff on them and it's it's pretty cool but they don't last very long yeah yeah it's it's the one we uh, around here, in the if you just if you just Google Drakensberg, if you're going to look at some pictures of Drakensberg all year mm -hmm. round, everything is so green. It's just unbelievable. Um, but uh, that's, that's but yeah, you know, it's different parts of the world. Um, how are you doing, sir? I believe you've had an interesting day. I'm doing good. It can't be too warm out there because you got Katie the Frosty the Snowman there. And the pitcher, so I <laughs> uh, had a pretty good week last week with the holiday and everything. And you know, most of it was about family time. We spent a lot of time, went on, went on a trolley ride and seen Santa Claus. The trolley ride was really cool, you know, it was pulled by Clydesdales. 
did that you know we did a little bit of shopping and just spent time with the family you know putting up a christmas tree my grandson was uh he'd been on me all last week to put up the christmas tree so last night we finally put up the christmas tree because he goes to his dad's every other night so saturday night when we usually put it up he was at his dad so we put it up last night for him then he put about two more two ornaments on and said i can't do it i too little i'm like yeah, he can <laughs> and we showed him how to do it and he kept dropping them you know and, and then he kept saying oh i can't do it i too little and you know, like, then we showed him some more and did it you know and it, he was giving up you know and i i don't like that he's that young and he's given up already you know and after we showed him how to do it a couple times he got into it and started doing it and had a good time out of it you know and i don't want him to have that give up attitude i want him to keep doing it until he uh, he succeeds you know and that's the mentality we need in in our marketplace because we give up too easy and uh, so you know it, it was a really good week to get to see family and and friends that i'd seen in a while and uh mainly my kids you know them coming over and stuff like that so didn't even go hunting this weekend took the weekend off you know and I did do some computer business over the weekend, but uh, other than that, you know, it's just kind of a slow week, you know, just celebrating with family. Well, I mean, yeah, I mean, this now is the, the, the time of year where everything kind of dies down and and all the smart marketers know that when it really dies down, they start getting their game up and they start working a little bit harder to prepare themselves for next year. But as I kind of take it easy, and slow down and things begin to wind down. And, yeah, I know it's, um, and you're absolutely right there. We've got to teach uh, teach uh, young ones that we need to on and never to give up, you know, just keep on being as stubborn as we possibly can. And just until we get a result, um, we've been brought up in a society where everybody just gives up so easily. And I think it's because we live in an age of convenience. Right, we live in an age of everything is ready for us, twenty four seven. We want a movie, it's there. We want this, it's that. It's so easy and readily available. And if it isn't easy, we kind of move on to something else. And and one of the aspects of running your own business is that you need to. <laughs> this is hard work, and that's one of the things that need to happen. Now, Frosty, the snowman. How was your uh, your <laughs> how was your week? <laughs> <laughs> well, it was awesome. It was a lot of sand and no snow. <clears throat> you might have thought there's snow on the mountain. <laughs> okay, Katie. Oh, I know. I can't help it. I like this little guy. My sister sent it to me by the mail. So I had this guy in my bathroom. So now I have him. That's awesome. But uh, I'm really excited to see the snow right behind me in the mountains. And uh, we had a really wonderful last two days of off the grid. And um, no cell service, no internet at all. And it was just a much needed for me to have um, no service. And uh, my phone practically blew up when we came back. So, <laughs> but it was nice. I have some awesome pictures on my timeline. Yeah, I no, sold them amazing. I gotta say, want to see snow open up your freezer jeez, jeez. seriously <laughs> like snow peas yeah we got snow peas in the freezer that's a good idea that's awesome and i gotta say we've got we've got marissa who's watching us right now we want to say hi to marissa and if you don't know who marissa is you're living on a rock she's one of these she she is an absolute um, gem online she really knows what she's doing and just great of you to be watching us um marissa welcome and we have Shamid, and we've got Joe Whistler, who wants to say hi. I know we've got a few people watching, uh, but not many people are jumping on to say hi. But that's maybe it's because we're so fascinating. Um, but yeah, it's probably because of that. We're so fascinating. Um, so, coming to my week, um, i got to say I've had the most... Well, well, first of all, let me just say that I've lost 13 pounds in a week. I've lost 13 pounds in one week. I've been going on this um, this this reboot of cleanse thing that I'm doing, and I haven't eaten for eight days. Uh, it's just been amazing. I've been juicing on fruits and vegetables, and that's all I've been doing. <laughs> and I'm going to be doing it for the next 20 days because I need to lose weight and I need to uh, become a little more healthy. 
don't worry, I'm not doing this forever. I'm not, I haven't become a vegan or anything like that. I'm just rebooting my system. And uh, just so I can, and I got to say, I'm sleeping better. I've got more energy. So tired when I do get tired, I actually have a lot more energy. So that's been amazing. But in a couple of days, <laughs> so on Saturday, we were getting ready to uh, do our little uh, team workshop with our team. Before we went online, my machine shuts down and goes bang. Like it doesn't work anymore. And I'm like, getting a hold of Katie and saying, I'm not sure I can be online because my machine just shut down. And of course, that's my livelihood right there, right? Like everything is in my PC. So I'm all focus has gone in that direction. That's one thing about me. I cannot focus on two things at once. I have to be focused. But that if you want to succeed, you've got to be focused. So that's just a habit of mine. But it would shut down. And uh, what had actually happened is the heat sink on my CPU had moved slightly because I had bumped it and lost all of its um, stickiness on the actual CPU. It wasn't stuck on there anymore. I didn't know that. It took me four hours to finally realize that that was the actual problem. I finally, um, I finally realized what my problem was, and I had no thermal paste. Now, if you don't know what thermal paste is, it's the stuff that sticks on the big heat sink onto your CPU. It looks like this. It comes in a little tube like this. It's called MS4. It's the best stuff you can buy on the market for your CPU. I didn't have any of that stuff. So I went and I got myself some toothpaste, and I, and I took the CPU off. I cleaned it, and I put toothpaste on it, and I stuck it back on. And I put everything back together, and my PC worked temporarily. I couldn't, I couldn't work on it very much, but I could browse, I could write a letter, and just update everybody what was going on. But I couldn't do anything that was CPU intensive. It runs pretty hot, so um, that was interesting. And I had to go and get some thermal paste. So today I drove around like crazy trying to find thermal paste. But I've got to say, I knew I had some thermal paste lying around the house somewhere. I couldn't find it, and I turned everything upside down. You know what that's like when you're trying to look for something. You can find everything else that you need except the actual thing you want. And I finally said, the hell with this, and I went outside, and I drove around, and I went to five different places that didn't have the stuff, that should have had it, but they didn't have it. And I finally found some place in a far distant country. I drove all the way there. It felt like forever. I finally bought it. I come back. And I dropped this on the floor. This is the one I bought. I dropped this on the floor and I looked down and right next to my foot, what do I find? The actual tube. So I spent all of that time for nothing. Everything worked again. And when my PC got back online, the internet, um, the internet just completely broke and it wasn't working properly. So then I had to wait for the internet to work properly. And my machine wasn't even working because it had shut down so many times the, night be uh, the day before that I wasn't booting at all. So I had to reinstall everything and that took hours for me to get ready. And now my machine is actually working fairly decently. It's actually worked like the best it's ever had before. And we're at this juncture here. And I just want to, first of all, kick this off by saying to people who are listening, with a question that I often get asked, and that is, um, I often get asked this question, what do I need? What is it that you actually use to actually run your business from home? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tell you what I have, all right? I'm gonna tell you what I have in the form of equipment, in the form of software, as to what I actually have on my PC. Because chances are you have something similar or you can get something similar and you really have no excuse run a business online. So this is what I'm going to tell you. The first thing you need, in my opinion, is you actually need a computer, all right? <laughs> okay? you, you need a computer. And you don't need a big, fancy, fast one like, like I do now, because when I started off, I had something that was I used to like to call an overweight paperweight. It was just it was load up my machine, and that was all, and I could process a couple of things. I could... Uh, run a couple of applications. You just need a computer. Uh, I have a microphone. It's a fairly fancy microphone that I've got. If you want it all, you can use the same one. 
that you find in a camera. I have a little camera that's not too expensive. And uh, you just need a camera, a microphone, a monitor with a PC, a keyboard. And that's all I have ready with regards to hardware. Software, I've got Windows 10. I have Microsoft. Um, you don't even have to use Microsoft, right, Jamie? You can use something like OpenOffice if you can't afford to buy Microsoft. Uh, let's see. I've got Adobe, but I hardly ever use Adobe. You don't even need that. And you can use free programs online to make pictures with. Uh, what else do I have? Uh, let's see. Um, I got I got an email account. I got an email account. I've got a PayPal account. I've got a bank account. And to start off, I would advise you have a couple of hundred dollars a month that you can put into your business every month. And that's really all you need. Does anybody else, can everybody else think of something else? I use an autoresponder as well, which is about, it starts off at like 25 bucks a month. What else can you guys think of? I use a marketing tool, <laughs> like attraction marketing tool that has training and. Yeah, okay. That, that, that. Oh, so yes, you need training, which is good. And we've got that there. If you want to get started, click on the button below and you can get started as well with some awesome training that we have. Anybody else can think of anything? Yeah, I got a screen capture piece of software to capture pictures. You got a, oh, you have Camtasia. I have Camtasia, but you can use Screencast-O-Matic to record videos or share screen. Um, I mean, I have Windows 10. I have Office 2016. I have the full Adobe Creative Cloud Suite, uh, you know, autoresponder. I mean, there's so much software on this computer, it's not even funny. But, uh, but bare necessities you know you need something to capture your screenshots something to record videos on and there's free ones out there um, like jing like jing uh, there's a uh, hardware you need a webcam you know either a built-in webcam to start out with you can use a built-in webcam like on your laptop or what or whatever but you know as you get more advanced you want to get a better webcam for better quality uh, video and stuff like that you know and starting out you know you can use your phone to do videos and stuff like that you know so um see other software uh maybe canva canvas free you can create screenshots or create banner ads or uh, uh, email headers or website headers or um, your twitter header your youtube header your facebook header all of them you can do in canva for free um i can't think of any more right off the top of my head Katie, can you think of something? I think you guys about cover it all. Um, I can't think of anything else. If you have a crappy internet, you might want a booster of some kind. Or if you have a weak <laughs> internet, you could try a booster. Uh, we have have one, and we, we need one because of our travels. But uh, if you're in a good metropolitan area, but if you're in the outskirts of, of a city or something, you may need that. Otherwise, I think you have it all covered, you guys. Well, I forgot one more thing. All you need is a phone and a headset, and you're good to go. <laughs> <laughs> Smartphone, not a flippy phone. Yeah, and a, a YouTube account, a Facebook account, and, you know, and a blog, and a website, all in one. Yeah. Need I, go on? I mean, you know, I mean, a lot of people say to me, a lot of people say to me, Dave, can you run a business from a phone only? And look, I'm not saying you can't do it, but in all practicalities, there are so many things you can do on a PC. And, and believe me, the, the the gap is getting closed and it's getting smaller and smaller where you can only use a phone but to get a PC because uh, a PC is always a good place to set base on. And, you know, a phone is so really good distracting. Idea. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the phone is so distracting. You're always waiting, and it's only on mobile. Like, try to write a blog post on mobile is kind of tedious, and you'll just tear your hair out. So it'd be better to have a bigger screen. Yeah, you know, on the subject, I also want to say things you don't need. Okay, things you don't need to, because of the stuff I always thought that I, I needed. Uh, I or like, you don't need to have a clean background. You don't need to have a very tidy background. You don't need that. In fact, the messier it is, the more real. I mean, look at Jamie, right? It looks like a, you know, look what he's got there. I right? just got the whole workstation back there. 
You don't need to have a clean background. And you do not need to have the most expensive camera. Yes, I'm talking to you. You don't need to have the most expensive camera. So get your eye off that sense of HD. You don't need that. But it's Cyber Monday, Dave. I don't care if it's Cyber Monday. <laughs> you don't need that. You just need a camera that can capture your image. And in fact, it doesn't need to be all that great. All right. In fact, you take a look at some of the big marketers that we know. Um, Diane Hockman, she still runs off a small camera and an expensive microphone. <laughs> but, you know, it's weird. She has the money to do that, but she doesn't spend money on that. You do not need to have that type of equipment. You don't need a fancy computer. You don't need feeds. All you need is something where you can go online and work. Because actually the hardest part of running a business online is not the hardware or the software. That you can always scrounge up. Anybody can get that stuff. The hardest part about running a business online, and I will say this because I'm going through this cleanse at the moment. I'm going through this reboot of my system. The hardest part of me completing this reboot of my system is to actually be consistent. You know? So I was around people who were eating burgers today, and everybody knows how much I love burgers, right? I love my food. I love meat. I love all of that stuff. But they were eating burgers all around me, and I just had to exercise some self-control. I just move out of the room. But you have to be consistent. You can't just start out on Monday, eat what you want on Tuesday, and then do something on, on Wednesday, and then, like, you're going to be consistent for two days and then take a break. In fact, one guy said to me, hey, Dave, can you cheat? <laughs> like, like, hey. And I would say, no, you can't because you have to follow through. And it's like with your business, right? So a lot of people are actually asking you, hey, Dave, can you have a cheat day in your business? Can you, can you, can you not work? <laughs> Is it possible for you to not work? And I've got to say, especially when you're starting out, you've got to be consistent. Believe me, I'll tell you this much. Every person that I come into contact with physically knows I'm on a cleanse. They know it. You know why they know it? Because this is always on my mind. I'm constantly talking about it. I'm constant. It's, it's something that's always fresh in the back of my mind. It's always there. Now I'm the guy known for the guy that's doing the cleanse. And when they see me again, they're going to wonder, gee, is this guy really losing weight or not? And then when I do, they're going to say, hey, this guy's actually achieving something. Maybe there's something to that. And it's the same with your business. When I first got started out, all I did, I think about my business, what I needed to do, get stuck into the system and actually follow a plan and to be consistent with the strategy. But the times, the seven years that I failed, it wasn't, it wasn't in my mind. It was in the background. I was getting distracted by all types of things. But I'll tell you this, that if you're serious about your business, people around you will begin to understand that there's something different about you. That's something to this. I've, I've, I've rented them for a bit too. Okay. Um, <laughs> yeah. Huh? Oh, I was just going to, uh, I was actually thinking about what a particular part that you said, Dave, um, kind of remind me of a lot of questions, like the most common question that I get is when people are brand new, like they do ask, like, do I need a computer? Or can I just do this on my mobile? But one of the things that they, uh, a lot of people ask is what do I, like, what's my first step? What is my exact first step? Now, um, we're part of a, uh, a, a system, okay? where we have our already have created tutorials and step-by-step -step processes and, and blueprints and all this other stuff um i always tell them to go go through all that because in this business you don't want to um keep repeating yourself over and over and over again that's why we use autoresponders so we don't have to email everybody one by one it's a tool that we use in order to you know get out to the masses once and it's done you know in the industry it's called evergreen so it's like an evergreen webinar, it's an evergreen training video, and evergreen basically means that it's 
never going to be outdated, kind of like Facebook training. It's never going to be evergreen because it's, Facebook is always changing. YouTube is always changing. It's just um, stuff that's evergreen is stuff like uh, like a five steps to get more leads or whatever. System set up, and that's super important for new people so they can follow that step-by-step -step process. And we laid it out in a way where, you know, it's worked for all of us that they can, uh, there's something on my screen that bugged me. It was, I thought I had a zip, but it was actually a screen dot. Okay. Um, <laughs> anyways, uh, so every time somebody asks, like, what is my first step? Like, well, you got to go through, like, say if there's a step one, step two, step three, and it, it's like a big blue button that says start here. I mean, I always got to tell them to start there. <laughs> so if anybody else wanted to add to that. Well, yeah, because ultimately, you know, ultimately what people do is they, the first thing I'll say is like, okay, so I want to get a business going. So here's my product. I want to sell it. So, so how do I actually go about doing that? And there is a there is a background you need to be aware of. There is there are there are blocks that need to be put in place so that you can understand how business works. So it isn't just a case of selling a product and then expecting that people will buy it. People are far more skeptical today than anything else. Uh, and so this is why we 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 understand that business is about people ultimately it's about people and building that relationship with people having a connection with people in fact um the only difference i think between running a business online and having a conversation with somebody else is that the response is a little bit slower because you don't get an instant reply so you've got to look at your business as a way of you having a conversation with somebody else and then anticipating what their response is or in many cases they will respond maybe a few days later a few weeks later and you can respond back to them and that's what i've done whenever i have made a video of education of something that i know and i've learned and i've shared with the world and somebody responds to me in the form of a question in the form of of a bit of more information i can add that to my my toolbox and respond to it with a positive way or in a way that I, maybe I think that their answer isn't helpful but I'm educating people and it's a back and forth with people that you have all the time and so that is ultimately what business is about business is not about you just selling product business is about you building a connection and a relationship with other people and that I think is the hardest concept to grasp People get started and they say, well, I just want to sell a whole bunch of stuff. So let me buy a whole bunch of traffic and send everybody to that page. And then I'm going to get rich instantly overnight. It doesn't work like that. It never that. Have you, has anybody here ever tried that when they have a product and they send out traffic to the product and they expect to get a result? I've tried that. I've tried it. Yep. It doesn't oh, work. I <laughs> Well, I put out postcards. I bought postcards one time. I can't remember how many. I like 500 postcards that would go out with my offer. And I had very few people respond. I actually had half of them come back with a bad address or actually deceased. So I wasted all that money on these postcards. And most of them were undeliverable and very few responded. Actually, some of them responded and sent the postcard back with, leave me alone, don't ever send this again. You know, And that is not attraction marketing in the least. And, and I wanted to say something about when Katie mentioned Evergreen, because we do have people that are in the background all the time on this, on this show that, that we don't know they are there. And there, some of them are new. And Evergreen is something that you put out there that keeps on forever. This industry does have its own language and over time you learn it but that's part of the evergreen thing and the attraction market even some of the big box places like walmart for instance they have greeters at the door if you've ever been to walmart and some others are starting to do that too it's a goodwill thing that they do and of course they'll check your if you're walking out without a bag they want to see a receipt 
And that's reasonable. That's understandable. But if you have stuff in a bag, they say, have a great day and off you go. So they have greeters that they're paying wages to, to greet their customers and show goodwill. And you know how big a business they are. And they've been doing that forever. And again, other companies are starting to uh, mimic them and do the same thing. Not very many, because they don't want to put out that money. So they're probably handcuffing themselves a little bit to drawing more people in because I have had, well, I have been in line at a parts store one time and I'm next in line and the phone rings and the supervisor, or the guy at the desk picks it up and starts talking to whoever called. Well, I'm already there. So we got two customers and who's he going to, is he going to, is he going to wait on a live body that's there to buy something or is he going to talk to somebody on the phone who may or may not come in? And I thought, well, I'm going to go complain to the manager about this. So I went back in a couple of days later, and I was going to buy something. And I walked in, and I noticed that that was the manager. I would, I've never been back, ever. Never went back to that store again. So you, the goodwill you need to put out and connect with them, build a rapport with people, get them to know you, and then they might buy you know, if you can find something that they need, if you have something that they need, obviously they connected with you for a reason. But you need to find out because they need to trust you. And that's the whole nutshell of attraction marketing is getting to know, get them to know, like, and trust you so that they will be comfortable giving you their hard-earned money to get your product, get your service, or even to listen to you and see what you have to say. That's, um, you know, you reminded me of a, of something that happened to me a couple of years back. And I'll say this because I, uh, I want you the guys to understand that you should never underestimate how smart your customer is. Never underestimate how smart people are. And uh, I, was, I was at a store once buying a CD, and this was years ago. I was, I was trying to buy a CD. And I wanted to find. I wanted to find out if the store stocked it. And there was a queue, uh, and this queue just went on forever. It just went on forever, and there was like one person. One person. There were like six empty counters, and one person dealing with this long queue. That that happens a lot here. But all I wanted to find out was, did they have the CD? And I noticed. I noticed a few people there were taking calls <laughs> in the just in front of the queue. So I just kind of I went a little bit forward, not in front of the queue, but just to the side desk, and I said, "Do you have the CD?" So you have to go back to the queue because they were following protocol. And I thought, okay, fine. So I went I went to the store to the entrance, and I saw the number on the door, and I took took my phone and I dialed. <laughs> the desk and I made the phone call and I spoke directly to the person that told me to go back to the queue and I said do you have the CD and they said hold on sir and I said uh, no we don't I said thank you very much and as I was talking somebody pointed to me like this and went like that and the guy's look on his face was priceless and why am I telling you this I'm saying this because you need to understand that your customers is to get will find ways to contact you. And this is why we always tell you that in your about page or in your bio page or in your uh, about me page on your blog, always give information where they can contact you. Put your personal email in, put your personal phone number in, put your your um in because a smart person if you have something of valuable to offer, if you don't have a way where they can reach you, how can you expect them to contact you? And, and, and one of the biggest complaints that we have here, and I'm sure people have this on the panel, that people say, no, I don't want to put my personal stuff on there. I don't want to put my personal information on, on the web because I feel violated or I feel like it's invading my, my privacy. I'm like, seriously? You want to sell something? And you don't want them to know who you are. 
you you absolutely need to put yourself out there and let people be able to contact you. And uh, this is something that a lot of marketers are starting to do more and more now, where you can actually interact with them. And how do we see this? We see, see this in Facebook Lives. We see this in YouTube Lives. We see this in Snapchat. Customer wants to be able to contact you, to be able to reach out to you. And I just got a, I got an, a message today from somebody asking me a question, and if I could help them out, and I responded. And my rule is respond within 12 hours. I responded as soon as I can uh, to get back to a customer. And that's how you build connections with your customers. That's how I do it. And offish. And you're not going to be able to be available. Don't expect to sell anything. Don't expect to sell anything. One of the biggest mistakes I made when I was, I started working at a, I used to be a, a merchandiser. I used to fill vending machines. And I had this rule don't give out my personal cell phone, don't give out my personal number. I don't want people contacting me. And one day my boss let it slip. He gave them my phone number. I don't know how he let it slip because he gave out ten digits and he had to think about it every he had to think about every digit he gave them. So I don't know how he let it slip. Back and I absolutely lost it with my boss. I said, How dare you give him my personal information? And of course, the boss, the guy, gives all of his customers his personal information. I'm the employee, and he's the boss. Now, if you want to run your own business, you need to start thinking like an employee, thinking in terms like that. You cannot have your 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 um, your bread buttered on both ends. You can't have your privacy and expect to do business with people. It doesn't work like that. You, you, I mean, yes, you can shut off the world, you can turn off your phone, you can spend time with your family, that's okay. But I'm saying if you wanted to be do business, you need to be transparent. You need to be able to expect people to reach out to you. So thank you for that, Pops. That's a very, very good point. Jamie, you want to add something? There's one, there's one thing I, I want to talk about quickly, and that is when, when you have your capture page out there and you want to ask for their information, um, I've noticed a lot of people are asking for a phone number from their prospects. And I argue against that. Getting their email is tough enough. But trying to go for a phone number is almost too much for somebody if they don't know you yet. And that's why you would put your phone number where they can get a hold of you if they want to. Um, oftentimes, again, they're not even going to, you know what, if you do the phone number thing, they may not respond at all. And oftentimes they put the wrong, somebody will put a fake email address in there because they just want to get in and see what you have to offer and they don't want you to contact them. However, once they see your stuff, they may come back to you if you have your phone number and contact information beyond that our capture page. So think a lot about that because, again, like Dave said, they don't want to give up their information without knowing you. That's right. And I couldn't agree. That's that's that is such a good point. I love that. Uh, rather give your information out so that they can contact you. And if you have a problem with that, you're in the wrong business. It's a harsh thing to say, I know, but. But if you want to, if you want to step outside of that, you need to step out of that comfort zone. Privacy issues. Maybe you need to work on yourself a bit more. Because, um, I mean, ultimately, it really comes down to that. Maybe um, you know, if you really, really are that concerned about your privacy because you're such a famous person, then get some, get an assistant, or something like that. But really, please, you got problems like that. Rather deal with what you can right now. You, you're not a celebrity yet. You're not somebody of that high caliber where, and if you do, you've got the money to get an assistant. So get over yourself. Um, you've got okay, to be able note, to. Okay? Talking about, I'm sorry, talking about celebrity mm. status. How many times have anybody gotten um, like a celebrity type person in this industry to like either like your post or maybe comment and how good that made you feel? So, 
if if there's people out there who actually do connect with their followers, huge difference than someone who like hides behind the computer or saying I'm too busy. Just I mean, either way it's your choice, either way you're branding, so how do you want your brand? That's my question. No, I agree. I agree. And I mean if you if you think that you, you can't if you think you're too good enough, you're too good to be gotten hold of because you don't want to be bothered by people. How can you expect to grow your own business? Because if people are interested, and I'll tell you what people want. They want honesty, they want transparency, and they want you to be straight with them, even if it's something they don't want to hear. This is why if anybody gets into a business with me, or if I, if I tell somebody about running a business, I tell them all of the bad points as well. You know, I don't just tell people they're going to make be, be rich overnight. I don't tell people they're going to make ten thousand dollars in three months. I don't tell people any of that nonsense. I tell people the hard, straight truth, and that is, it's going to take hard work and consistency. And if they want to know it can be done, there are plenty of examples of where people have achieved amazing stuff. I mean, I live in South Africa. I don't work for anybody. I don't need to. I, I, I you know, I'm in a position now where. I actually have a lot more time on my hands than I normally did, but I've, I've only got here because I've put in the hard work, and it's taken me four years to get here. But if you're not prepared to wait that long, if you're not prepared to wait longer, then then there is no reason for you to continue because ultimately, when when somebody says, like there are certain key phrases that somebody will say to me where I know I'm no longer interested in this line of conversation. And somebody says something like, can I make my money back within the 10 days of the trial? <laughs> we know already that this, this person is not interested, right? Of other things that people say to you, like, um, uh, is it, is it, um, can I make a return on my investment quickly? How long will it take for me to be able to make a profit? That's another, that's another one where it's, kind of like this for so long one of the I never had that question in my mind I never all I wondered was I suppose I wondered how long it would take me but I never thought to myself because I got so sick and tired of failing that I just was determined enough to say nope I'm doing this until I die I'm doing this until I'm in the grave I, I'm not settling for anything less than achieving what I need to and I just, I just made that my mantra. I wasn't going to be confound to a time, confound to a. Uh, I just said, um, if I'm going to make this, I'm going to do this, no matter what, how long it takes me. And I'll tell you this: the times that I've really succeeded hugely in my business is when I spent the most amount of hours working on my business. So, ultimately, deep down. Deep down in the depths and the cockles of our heart, we know when we are not putting the right amount of work in. We know it. And you need to be truthful with yourself about how hard you are actually working. And, and sometimes we fool ourselves, right? We fool ourselves. We fool ourselves into thinking that we've been working all day. I've been working all day. Well, what have you actually done? What have you done? You've watched one or two training videos, and you've maybe wrote two posts. And in, in the space of that, you've gotten coffee, you've had a cigarette, you've gone for cake, you've gone for lunch, you've, you've uh, listened to music, you took a time out, you did a little bit of reading, uh, Heat Magazine, <laughs> you, know, you know, and you fool yourself into thinking this is going to actually do something for you. You need to put yourself into actual activities that are going to get your results and we call them what producing activities not activities that make you think you're actually producing an income because we all know what that is now if there's any question that anybody wants to ask please ask a question okay that's why we've had this here so you know, it's been mentioned uh, here before, but it's worth talking about again, and that is that if you put enough content out, you know, just concentrate on putting value out on whatever business you're in, 
put content out on YouTube, do a blog, do a Facebook, do LinkedIn or whatever social media you prefer or several, get the content out there. And there are people, Dave will test this and others, that some they're watching you. You are being watched, but they're not repair, prepared to contact you yet, but they will. If they're hungry enough, they will. And it has happened, and it can happen to you. Uh, it, and that's what, it, that's what advertising is. That's what the big businesses do. They want to advertise. They're putting content out there, but they're not doing it the way we are, and we have a better way because we're putting out value, not just hanging a, a shingle out there with a product. That won't work, not in this industry. So do YouTube and, and talk about your product, but don't, you know, you don't want to give out the whole enchilada because you have to hold something back so that they come to you to find out what the rest of the story is. So you find little bits and pieces to put out there and talk about it and talk about how it's affected you in a positive way and people that you know. And if you can get people to give you some, some, um, a video to support you in that or show where people are also benefiting with that product or service, put that out there with their permission. And these people that are watching you are going to see that and they're going to get hungrier and hungrier and hungrier and they're going to know you and like you and, and trust you even more because you're sharing information with them that they otherwise wouldn't have. And they will get to you. They'll contact you. And then you can get the ball rolling with them and get them set up and help them succeed like you are. And that's what it takes. It's going to take a while. This is not a quick business. You can't just open your door and expect people to walk in. That isn't how it works. And that's just a plain fact. But it will work. It does work. It works better than being an employee, even though you're an employee of yourself, as Dave said. But you are not an employee watching somebody else on their yacht because they're making money off of your hours, which you're not getting paid enough for. You're worth a whole lot more than that if you invest your time. And that's what it takes, your time in your own business, not in theirs. And you will see results, unless you really screw it up. There's a possibility. I don't know who you are. And I don't know how you're gonna do it. But if you do it right, and we have the tools at our disposal to be able to learn how to do it right. So if you are interested in that, of course, you can contact any one of us or whoever sent you to this, this show and find out more about it. And you dig down in deep and learn because most, most companies have some kind of teaching, but not all of them have the right kind of teaching. They just want you to get out there and start sell, sell, sell. Write down all these names and contact them and blah, 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 and cold contact them and approach them and tell them, hey, this is a great product. You got to buy it. That don't work either. I have had friends and family tell me <laughs> tell me to take a hike, you know, and I don't even talk to them. I talk to my family and, and, and friends. Well, most of my friends are in this industry now because the friends that I had before go off in a different direction, and that's not the direction I want to go in. And that is a cost of doing some of this business too. You're going to lose a few friends, not in a bad way. You just have a different interest. So you kind of just separate. We've all experienced that over time. You know, high school friends, they all go off to college friends or whatever it is you're in or other work friend, work friends. If you get a different job, you kind of don't communicate anymore. That's just the way it is. But if you really want to get started in this and, and really make a go of it, which it is a better way. Follow what our direction is and you will. You'll succeed and you'll see results over time. Thank you, Pops. And, you know, you said something there about, and it's something I've, I've learned, and we've all heard the, the whole saying about whenever you're, whenever you're marketing, whenever you're building a relationship with people online, Never give away what it is you're actually setting so that people have a chance to connect with you. And one of, you know, we all know the reasons typically, I think, for not mentioning, for instance, your product or your the product um, brand that you're with or the opportunity that you're with. And we say that because typically it's because you. But there's another reason why you want 
you, you don't want to give away information. And it's a very, very important one. Um, so I'll give you, I'll give you a, an example. So let's say I'm talking about, I don't know, um, let's see. I'm talking about high sense. Yeah, high sense remote control. Okay, so I got a high sense remote control for my monitor here on my. I've got another monitor. Here, it's a high sense monitor. So, and I say to you, this high sense monitor is amazing. It floats. It runs on air. It it. Uh, you don't need to put batteries in it. It's the most amazing remote ever. And the first thing you're going to do is you're probably going to Google high sense, right? So forget me, Hyacinth is another thing you're looking for. But here's the other thing that happens. When people talk about something constantly on a consistent basis, to go down the negative road. Always. Always. So eventually, if somebody looks hard enough for Hyacinth, they're going to find something bad about it. It's like your opportunity that you're with. So if you mention the opportunity, Okay, great. Now they've forgotten about you, but they've gone to look into it, and now they're going to find something bad about it. It doesn't matter what company you're with. It doesn't matter what opportunity you're with. If you give away the goods, that person off your um, video, and they're going to start Googling and eventually find something negative about it. And because they found something negative, they probably are never going to listen to what you have to say. But if you can get them to give them your give them their email address in the form of a capture page when it's just a name and email, not a phone number like Pop says, but just a name and email, then you can start drip feeding them and building a good relationship with so that they can get to know you and get to like you and get to laugh with you and get to share funny stories that you have about how your computer broke down on you and you had no control of it and you building this relationship with, with somebody. Then when you finally have that connection and you do mention something that you are promoting, they are more likely to go and buy from you because they know you more than the other person. And that's why, um, you know, people will always go down the negative road. If you, if you give away a product immediately, somebody is going to go that and, and this is actually one of the things that I love about Marissa and while she's on you, I hope she's watching. I remember speaking to her years ago about something which I never understood what she meant. But I'm going to talk about you because I just thought this was amazing. You did something that threw me for a loop. And I couldn't understand why you were doing this. But I think I may know why you did it. And I could be wrong. But but maybe there's a different psychology to it. But Thing that you were going to make a video, you were going to do a review on a product, and you weren't going to put in any link underneath that video. There was no information. All, all Marissa did is she made this video, and she never put any link anywhere underneath that video. I could never understand why. Why would you do that? And I think, I think, and I could be wrong here, but I think it's because Marissa understood, or maybe she done because she's definitely a smarter marketer than I am, but she understood that people want to know more about what you have to say. And when Marissa speaks, you want to know more about what she has to say. And you, she builds this connection with an audience. She builds a subscriber. And I remember her telling me she wanted to build a subscriber base that would listen to her all the time. And I and I kind of understand that. So Marissa, that was something I learned from you years ago, and I've I've never forgotten it. But the whole idea is to build a relationship with your subscriber base. Talk to them on a regular basis. And this is what happens when you subscribe. Every time they make a new video, you click on it because they have something interesting to say. You click on it because there's something interesting to say. Until one day they say something that really rings true for you and you identify with them so much that you absolutely need to get in contact with them. This to myself. This is what happens to everybody here on this panel. When people, when you connect with them, They'll send you a personal email. You'll sometimes get a message from 
Sometimes I get a message through Skype, and I don't even use Skype that often. Somebody will send me a message through Skype because they found my my information on Skype, and I wonder how the where did the or somebody will phone me. I'm like, what? How did they get? And and, and I forget that is out there, and people want to know because I've said something that really, really rings true. Um. Yes. What, what were you saying, Marissa? Yeah, when I started doing reviews, uh, that's the way I got um, I got went crazy. And ever since then, how do I review videos? Yes. So, yeah, okay. <laughs> so, Marissa, you remember that. Sorry, I, I couldn't read that sentence. Maybe it was because I was... Right, but, but that's my point. Building relationships with your audience is the best way for them to connect with you. And the only way that they get back to you is if you keep on being consistent with the same action day after day after day, or week after week after week after week, month after month after month, year after year. You know, I watched some of my videos the other day and I thought, damn, I really said something smart back then. <laughs> I'm like, I would never have thought that now. Nah. Old material. And I'm like, wow. And I'm like, that's really good. But back then, I was looking into that and I was studying it and people are watching those videos now. So, sorry, Jamie hasn't said hardly anything. So I want Jamie to say something before we close up here on the hour. Something. Uh -huh. something. I thought you were uh -huh. in a, like a snowstorm there, Jamie, because all of a sudden I saw smoke. <laughs> awesome. uh, one of my favorite things that people have asked me is, you know, why do I have to watch a training video? Just teach me the easy way to make money online. And I'm like, there's no easy way to make money online. It just don't fall into your bank account. Well, I don't want to have to watch training videos. Well, that's how you learn how to do this on online marketing thing because somebody out there smarter and brighter than all of us made a training video and they're making big money. That's the reason why they made the training video to teach you how to do it the easy way. Instead of jumping through all the hoops and the hurdles that you go to go through as a new marketer, and you, we've all been there, we've all experienced it, we've all fell on our face, got back up, brushed the dirt off, and went right back to it. We've all been spammers before, you know. Um, I seen a big post on that on Facebook the other day. How, how about somebody posting in groups? Is you know, is this a real legitimate group or is it just a spam group? And the post was about people spamming in groups, and I bet she had. 20 spam links in there. Oh, join my deal. Join my deal. And she kept saying, I'm not looking, you know, and people just don't, don't get it. You know, that, you know, and that's why Dave brought up this concept. You know, he taught, taught us five things about getting a mentor, being in a community. Uh, oh, I had a brain fart and I lost my training thought. Mentor community. Um, Mental training, community, time in your business. Yeah, okay. Work. Time in your business, or invest in yourself, invest in your business, and, and uh, let sy systems work for you. And people just want to go out and spam their link, and they don't understand. People don't care about your product. When you go into, say, Best Buy, you're on a mission to look for a new big screen TV. The salesman comes over and says, can I help you? What's the first thing you say? No, I don't need help. Because you're on a mission. You have, you know what TV you want to look at, what brand, what it does, all the features, and you're going to go look at that TV because you want to see it in in person. You know, And when you're ready to buy, you find a salesman and say, I want that TV, and you do it. And it works the same way online. You build a relationship with them. You know, most salesmen, they don't know how to build a relationship with you. They just, they want to push your product, push your product, you know, and building relationships is so much better. Even, even with mini chat, some of us are using mini chat and I've got a, a component in my mini chat where it goes to talk to human, you know, and, and it'll pop up on my, on my phone and I can start interacting with them right away. And I have a lot of interaction that way. It seems like I get more people to my training that way because if they have a question, they can always say, talk to human and come talk to me. But then they can go on and watch the training if they want to watch it. And there was a new feature added here a while back. And 
it's really cool. I haven't dug into it a lot, but I really I've messed messed with it a little bit, and uh, it really makes the setup process a lot easier. But people don't take the time to invest in themselves and learn how to make that system work for them. You know, and that's one thing I always do. I'm always in some kind of training. I just bought a uh, a course. You know, it's not an expensive course. I pay ten bucks for it on cryptocurrency because cryptocurrency is going nuts right now and I want to know more about it. You know, and I'm not going to jump in full fledged without knowing about it. You know, so I take the time, buy a course, educate myself in it. And if it's something I want to invest in, then I invest in it because I got to start, you know, I'm working for my retirement right now. So I guess I'm, uh, I'm doing a rant like you do, Dave. That's <laughs> fine. Uh, you know, I mean, Jamie is, and I mean, because Jamie is always looking for new things and uh, educating himself uh, because he he understands that things are always changing, and this is what we've got to be looking out for. And and getting back to what Marissa said about she was so sick and tired of the whole bait and switch game because back when when I was doing it, there was a lot of bait and switch, a lot of bait and switch. So typically speaking, the way I learned to do videos was. We would go to any product and say, hi, um, I'm going to be talking about XYZ product. Now, you don't need to make money online using this product. I've got a great way, and it's a whole bait and switch thing. And there were so many videos on there that, that everybody just started to hate upon it because that's all you ever hear. And this is where Marissa is really good at thinking outside the box. She outside of the box and she tries to do something different and this is why I got so sick and tired of of seeing the interview videos doing that very thing and so I thought let me talk about something I knew about binary option software because I was in that field and give people some actual solutions but I still did a bit of a bait and switch thing but I made it a little more interesting and you've got to listen to your audience you've got to listen to your audience uh, because I mean, that's how people get the results they want to. And there are plenty of examples Dave? of that. Yes. Going they did into a bait and switch. You give people a choice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. Again, my choice. That's right. Again, my choice. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, but, you know, I think if we had to sum what we've spoken about, um, everything here is to listen to your customer, uh, understand that they are smart relationship with them and educate yourself in training that is so fundamental to your business and if you listen carefully to the market out there you'll find that most marketers aren't doing it most marketers are not actually doing this what they are trying to do is make themselves look amazing false facade which in many cases is an outright lie they present facts which are completely twisted why don't you be why don't you be a Katie Stage? Why don't you be a Jamie Shaw or a Pops or a Marissa Bush or a um, somebody out there who thinks differently, who thinks outside the box and who's approaching it in a way where people go, Oh, hold, what you, this is different. Why are they telling me it's gonna be hard work? Why are they telling me that I need to work in my business every day? People are not doing that. So why don't you be an honest to goodness, an honest person, a fundamental person, somebody who actually gives people the, the nuts and bolts of what you actually need to do and stop people's mind up with fluff. And on that note, we're going to end and we will continue next week. Um, I think we're on a good ride here, but we, we need to keep it to an hour. So I'm going to ask Pops if you can have... Uh, We'll go through the panel, yeah. And uh, Pops, any last words? Yeah, one last thing I wanted to talk about, their capture page, which is where they trade you their email and name for more information. Um, don't ask for a last name. First name, email. The last name is a little bit too much. Same with the phone number. And oftentimes you'll find that their last name will be in their email anyway. So you could probably find him on Facebook or wherever um, based on that. With that, I'm going to say good night and thank you all for being here and see you next week. Hope you have a great week and hope you'll be here.
next week. Thanks. Jamie? So what I want to say is everybody has a big passion, something they're very passionate about in their life. And that's what you need to focus on. Back in September, Dave said, Jamie, you're really good at computers. You're passionate about computers. You need to focus on computers. So I did. I got two sitting here, right here, that I need to fix for clients, you know. And since September, I've been averaging about two to three hundred dollars a week just focusing on my computer business. You know, it's not millions of dollars, but it's an average steady income. People keep coming back, you know, and it's something I love to do. Katie see my 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 mad scientist area. I got four computers here. She fell in love with my touch screen, which is right here, you know, and and she wants to come back and play with it again. I know she does, but that's what I'm passionate about. My daughter's moving her stuff out upstairs. I got a room upstairs at 16 by 24. I'm moving all my computer stuff upstairs into that room. That way I can spread it all out and have one big computer orgy. <laughs> but take that passion that you have, take that passion that we have and focus on it and push that. You know, you don't you don't have to be sell, sell, sell all the time. Push your passion and people will flock to you and come to you. That's a that's a really, really good point there. I love that. And and it it, it really is sorry, before we get to you, Katie, I just want to I want to drop this on people. Um he, Ricky Burroughs um got into marketing and he encouraged his mom to get on camera to talk about the fact that she was a widow. And his mother said, no, 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 what the, what, whatever I got to offer. And he was just saying, just share your experiences with people. And tell Because there are other, other widows out there who are going through exactly what you have gone through and they need your help. And on the advice of Ricky, she started to do this. And what's interesting about that whole experience is because some of hers and because she loved doing it, she actually started passing Ricky. <laughs> Uh, because her focus, her focus, of to do, and and that and that is that's the biggest example I can give of, or that I can think of with regards to doing your passion, you know, and making that the focus of why you're doing what you're doing. I'm, you know, I'm I'm in a position now where I decided I'm going to go on this, I'm going to lose some weight. I need to lose some weight because. You know, I'm, I'm getting a bit um, wiser in areas and I need to start slimming down. So I, I took on this challenge and it's been tough, but I am, but I'm being consistent with it. And believe me, when I first decided to do this, I just kept on at the back of my mind, just kept on saying, I've got to do this. 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 And I repeated that phrase in my mind the whole time. And it's been eight days now. I've been on this juice cleanse. I haven't eaten in eight days. And I have walked past chops. I've walked past steaks. I've walked past burgers. I've walked past, oh my goodness, Borovos rolls and amazing. You don't know what that is, but it's an, if you come to South Africa and you get a Borovos roll, it's the best. It's the best hot dog version. That's all I can say. But it's it's a Budavos roll and it's just amazing. It's like when I die, I'm going to Budavos roll along with um, fat burger. But anyway, uh, be consistent with that. So keep it your passion and keep focusing on that. So with that being said, Katie, you can have the last word to say goodbye because I've ranted on for a bit here. Um, Seriously, just... I have to go on after fat burger. How am I supposed to top that? Oh yeah, with the pickle. <laughs> <laughs> So actually, uh, I just wanted to encourage everybody and, and and know that we all have a purpose. We all have a gift and it would just, um, I'm just going to go ahead and bring religion into it. So God is uh, wants us to be rich and to help other people, um, not to die rich, basically, you know, just to help people get to where they need to go um, and change this world for, for the better. So, and, and this is the, op this is the opportunity. This is the industry. This is, this is the only place that I've seen because I've had 31 jobs in 17 years and it's all self-centered world out there. And this industry is pretty much the only industry that I've experienced where it, I don't care what business you're in. 
all everybody on this panel and everybody that I've met, they don't care, you know, the right people. They don't care what business you're in. We just want to help each other and lift each other up. Um, just real quick, that reminds me of Pitbull. We were at the GoPro event, and Pitbull says he loves to be here with other with people in network marketing because um, in the industry as a whole is all about helping each other. And it just just I'm like, wow, a rapper person says that. Um, and it was just so that would that was just like the amazing thing that I that he said. So I'm like, that's true. So um, we all help each other out. So I just wanted to. Thank you, Katie. And uh, so, please, guys, and uh, you know, and we we help each other out here. It's always good to surround yourself with successful people. That's the way that we get there. Because if you surround yourself with the wrong type of people, it can it, it can it not only can it bring you down. And let me tell you something. An uh, expression I love: when you dance with the devil, you wait for the music to stop. All right. You absolutely need to get yourself out of a bad environment and put yourself into a good environment because, because a bad environment can bring you down so badly. And sometimes all it needs is just for you to change your environment. So with that being said, and we've been saying goodbye now for about 55 minutes here, and uh, you know, sound like a sermon. With that being said, I've got to end off and blah, blah, blah. So I'm going to say goodbye. See you same time next week. Cheers, guys. Bye bye. Oh, and don't forget Wednesday on on Wednesday. Don't forget, don't forget Th Thriving Thursday on Thursday, and yeah, yada yada yada.